Hello everyone, so I've been on a bit of a road trip this morning as you can probably tell by me being sat in the car here. I've just pulled up at the Muntons Malting site in Sunny Stow Market because I've been invited to do a little tour of the facilities and have a look around, um, look at their new homebrew products and all the manufacturing process for making those. So it should be interesting. And uh, shout out to Andrew Leadham, who has arranged this today, who invited me down to have a look around. So uh, cheers, Andrew. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> So let's start off with a little bit of background on Muntons the company. As you can see here, they've just celebrated their centenary year. Now you're probably familiar with the Muntons brand through their homebrew offerings, including the kits and malt extracts that we're all familiar with. And obviously in order to produce the malt extract products, they need to malt the barley themselves as well, which is also sold directly into the brewing and distilling industries. What you might not be aware of is that they also do a large amount of their business producing malted ingredients, which are used across the food and drinks industry in a whole range of products, some of which you can see in the little clip here. So a quick run through of the Muntons history. 1921 saw the incorporation of the company in Bedford, no less, just around my neck of the woods. This was followed by a move to the current site in Stowmarket Market in 1948. And following on from that, expansion to Bridlington site in Yorkshire, and later on in 2007, international expansion into Singapore, and in 2009 into the US as well. Recent years have seen a big focus on sustainability projects, which have included an anaerobic digester in 2015, and then in 2021, the completion of the Muntons Energy Center, which is allowing them to work towards net zero by 2050. So in this image, you can see an overview of the Stow Market site and all the different elements of the production process for the malt and then the malt extract that follows on from that. In the next few clips, you'll see us walking from the left-hand side of the site across the front round to the Cedars Maltings. A quick shout out to Mark and Penny from the Oyster Boys Brewing Company who are a channel on YouTube. You can see them in a few of the clips from the day do go over and drop them a sub they will probably be putting some content out related to this tour as well fairly soon so look out for that So the production process at Muntons all begins with the malting of the raw barley. This is transported from the storage silos, which you can see in the clip here, along conveyor belts into a large conical steeping vessel. Here it's soaked in water for around two days before it is then transported further into the saladin boxes that you can see in the clips coming up. These boxes are used for the germination phase of the malting process. The environment is closely controlled so that a stable moisture level and temperature can be maintained within the green malt. This allows the grain to begin developing a root structure, which in turn leads to the activation of a variety of enzymes. These enzymes will help to break down the cell wall, providing freely available starch when the malt is later crushed. Other enzymes will break down proteins within the grain. And finally, it will also produce the enzymes which are used to convert starch into fermentable sugars when we put them into the mash tun later in the brewing process. The saladin boxes feature a set of vertical screws which are attached to a crossbar. This moves horizontally down the length of the container while the screws turn the barley from top to bottom. This combined with the perforated base on the boxes allows for a fairly deep bed of barley to be used while still maintaining a consistent level of moisture and rate of germination. Muntons also maintains an older drum malting system where the entire drum rotates in order to turn the malt during the germination process. These are generally used for smaller batches and more speciality malts. The germination process will typically be completed after around four days, at which point the green malt is transferred back onto a conveyor belt and out of the saladin boxes or drum maltings into the kiln. 
Now, for reasons that I would hope are fairly obvious, we didn't go into the kiln to do any filming, but the eagle-eyed amongst you may have spotted it in one of the earlier clips, which I'll just put up again now. Inside the kiln, hot air is recirculated through the malt bed in order to make it stable and safe for storage. This is done slowly at first at relatively low temperatures until the malt reaches around 6% moisture content. At this point, the heat can be increased to the final kilning temperature, the level of which will help to give malts their characteristic flavours and colours. For example, ale malts will typically be kilned around 95 to 100 degrees C, whereas lager malts will be kilned around 10 degrees lower in the mid-80s. Once the malt has finished kilning, it is put through a de machine, which is used to remove the small rootlets that have emerged during the germination process. This malt culm is a co-product for the maltster which can be sold on as animal feed, as it has a higher protein content by weight than the original barley. Once the malt has been cooled and screened, it can be transferred into storage silos until it is ready for sale direct to breweries and distilleries, further processing into crystal or roasted malts, or processing by Muntons themselves into liquid and dry malt extracts. So how is that malted barley processed into liquid malt extract, which forms the basis for beer kits and many other products, and dry malt extract, which can be used to supplement the fermentables in those kits, for extract brewing from scratch, and to make yeast starters amongst many other applications outside of brewing. The first stage of the process is essentially the same mashing step that home brewers and professional breweries would take in order to extract the sugary work from the grains. The malt is first fed into a hammer mill to be crushed. This will produce a much finer grist than what we would normally see in a homebrew setup or again in a professional brewery. The composition of the grist can be tailored to suit the requirements of different extract products and beer kits in the same way that you would construct the grist in an all-grain recipe for a particular style. Due to the very fine crust used on the malt, a special filtering system using a series of plates and screens is used to separate the work from the grain. You can see some of these filters in operation in the footage here. The work, which is typically around 20% sugar at this point, is then passed to the evaporators where it can be reduced down to a final concentration of around 80% sugar for a typical liquid malt. You can see a little bit of footage from inside one of the evaporator towers here. These systems operate under a vacuum so that the work can be boiled at a lower temperature than normal. This prevents any flavour or colour changes from the heating process. Once the desired consistency for the extract is reached, it's passed through to an inline pasteuriser and then on to the extract blender. At this point, the extract which is going to be used in beer kits can have additional hop extracts, flavourings and other liquid malts added into the blend. From here, it can be sent for packaging in various formats, including canning lines for the home brew kits and so on, or it can be sent on for further processing into dry products such as spray malt. The liquid malt extract which is going to be turned into dry products is usually produced at a lower sugar concentration so that the product is less viscous and easier to work with using the spray dryers and other equipment. To produce dry malt extract, a fine mist of liquid malt is pumped into the spray dryer via a rapidly rotating atomizer. This forms a vortex in the hot chamber causing the extract to dry almost immediately into fine powder particles. A series of hammers tap the sides of the chambers to release the dry extract and allow it to flow out to the bottom. The hot air and extract is then separated and the spray malt is sent on for storage and further packaging in areas like this. The last part of the tour took us to the Innovation Centre, where Nick, the innovation brewer, develops recipes for extract kits and ingredients and other brewing products. The Innovation Centre includes a full steam-powered microbrewery for piloting batches on, sensory evaluation spaces for testing products, and even small-scale systems for producing liquid and dry malt extracts. 
There are also kitchen and bakery facilities for the development and testing of products for the food and drinks industry. All of the equipment in the Innovation Centre is designed to emulate larger scale systems and processes in Munton's own production and that of their customers, so that new products can be successfully recreated at scale. In this space on the left, you can see the micro versions of the evaporators and spray dryers discussed earlier. So the only thing left to do was sample some of the recipes that are currently being developed. I can't give you any details on what these are at the moment, but let's just say it was quite a wide and exciting range of styles, and I suspect some may be destined for the new taproom series of beer kits that Muntons have recently released. These kits will feature a rotating lineup of contemporary beer styles and are being produced on a limited edition small batch basis. So grab some now if you fancy trying out any of the current lineup you can see here. As you probably guessed, I was kindly given these kits to test, so watch out for some reviews coming soon. So that just about wraps it up for this one. We'll just finish off with a little bit of B-roll and a chance to say a final thank you to all the team at Muntons for organising the day and giving us a few freebies as well to take home with us. If you have any questions about the video or any of the content on here, do feel free to throw them into the comments and anything that I can't answer, I will try and pass on to Muntons themselves. If you enjoyed this video, do make sure you click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content. And you can now also support the channel by making a small contribution via the thanks button. Cheers, everyone. See you soon.